What's up, what's up, everybody? It's Hoya Rock from the one and only Mad Bull and Smoking Word Podcast. In my hands right now, I got that new LP from my boys in Terra. The record is called Pain Into Power. I believe, I believe in these days, these days, these days of brotherhood. Ten brand new songs produced by Todd Jones, the artwork by Spoiler. It drops on May 6th on Pure Noise Records in the U.S. and on N Hits Records in Europe. Hardcore lives. You know the deal. Hello, friends. This episode is brought to you by From Within Records. Very awesome news. This is why I highly suggest you follow From Within Records on Twitter and Instagram. We saw the long awaited return of Carbonite is finally among us. Like a Sickness, five song EP coming out soon. That is some of the best news I've heard in a really long time. I'm a really huge fan of Carbonite. Go listen to their demo. I have the shirt hanging behind me and I wear it proudly to this day. Late this summer, Once in Unity Comp, Volume 3, Not One Truth, Hellbound, Never Again, C4, Chemical Fix, Search for Purpose, Stiff Meds, Fool's Game, Contention, Buried Alive, Live It Down, Gridiron, Adrian, Broken Vow, Nothing But Enemies, Submit, Killing Me, and Wreckage. I'm definitely looking forward to that comp coming later this summer. Also, Human Work LP from Warren. Second pressing is available now, so please head over to the From Within Records Big Cartel and grab one before it's too late. This summer, Shackled, Doubt Surrounds All in the USA. I'm so excited for Shackled to hit a full US tour. They're coming to California, which I'm looking forward to so much. And they will be here with Statement of Pride. The program date is going to go insane. So please make sure to roll out to that and support the touring bands. Also support Warn. They're hitting the road this summer. They're doing a full US. They will be in LA in July, which I can't wait for. I love seeing Warn live. They're such an awesome band. If you haven't yet, please go stream and still from Envision, their new 12 inch EP. It's available now. And like I always say, please support From Within Records because they support us. And if you're looking for high quality merch for your band, for your business, for whatever, please go support our friends over at Good Fortune Printing out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. You can follow them on Instagram at Good Fortune Printing, or you can email them contact at goodfortuneprinting.com. They do amazing stuff. They print merch for a lot of your favorite bands. They print all of my collab shirts and they are a pleasure to work with. So shout out to Good Fortune Printing out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. On today's episode, we had to track down our good friend John. He plays in Spaced. All of you know that I love Spaced. They're doing amazing stuff. They're about to play with Newfound Glory. They're about to head to Europe with Comeback Kid. They're just uh, so busy and doing awesome stuff. So shout out to Spaced. John also plays in a band called Post Prom, which I am such a huge fan of. He, he plays in a bunch of bands, but I just have to uh, single out Post Prom because this is the one other project that sticks out to me. They put out an album in 2021 titled Who You Pretend to Be, and it's such good music. I love it so much. It was so fun for me to be able to sit down and talk to John about the bands that he plays in. So if you're not familiar with post prom or even spaced at this point, which I'd be surprised, uh, click pause, boot up your Spotify, your Apple music, your title, your YouTube, whatever, and go check out the bands that John plays in. They're amazing. And then come back here and listen to John and I speak about coffee, his love for star Wars. I had to introduce him to fanboys, believe it or not. It was fun. I, I I loved speaking with John. It was such a pleasure. So please, all of you, strap in and enjoy this conversation. So without further ado, please welcome John to the show.
All right, and we're live. Welcome to the podcast, John. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having me. No, thank you. This is uh, an awesome thing. I'm super stoked to have you on the podcast, uh, especially a member of Spaced. I'm a huge fan of your band. Um, I, I appreciate thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm slowly knocking down the members. You know, I, I've had on Lexi and Donnie. Uh, Donnie will re- return shortly. And, and now that I have you on, it's like, cool. There's like an, another member checked off the list that's on the podcast. So I'm, uh, I, I appreciate you being down to, to come on today and to, um, you know, have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I, uh, I, I just love talking to people and stuff. So. I'm I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, those the, those are my favorite guests. Um, so I, I I appreciate you being down. Um, but for people who may not know, um, can you just give like a brief history on uh, uh who you are and like where you grew up? Yeah. Uh, my name's John. I grew up in uh, Williamsville, New York, which is like 20 minutes outside of the city of Buffalo. So like for people who don't know, uh western new york uh williamsville is considered western new york buffalo is the city that's where like city hall is um you know that's like the the main city uh Mm -hmm. and then there's suburbs outside like williamsville cheektowaga kenmore west seneca uh but then there's also south buffalo north buffalo um i'm definitely missing many but uh, i grew up in williamsville which is like 20 minutes and everything is 20 minutes away from everywhere, no matter where you go, it's always 20 minutes. Um, so I grew up in Williamsville, but I went to high school in the city, uh, of Buffalo. Um, and yeah, uh, all I do now is just like play music with my friends and make a lot of coffee for a lot of people every day. That's awesome. And speaking of the coffee, I feel feel like that's what led us to this podcast because I had, um, obviously been following you on, on Instagram before. And you had uh, posted, I, I think it might have been because of like um, like one year of you like uh, working there, right? If I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. 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 It was uh, the cafe that I manage. Uh, it was our one year. It was our birthday. It, it had been one year since we opened that cafe. Um, our third our third one. So, um, yeah, I made a, a banana simple syrup for a, a, a banana split mocha. It was it was yummy. It was super yummy. And. Uh, I get really interested because I'm, I'm not like, like in life, I never even cared about coffee, but then I entered in this social circle, excuse me, social, social circle, geez. And we would do like coffee nights and I was like, Whoa. all right, I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I, I guess we're going to this place. Even though like, I didn't know what to order. I was just like completely mm-hmm. new to this whole thing. I was still nervous to order at Starbucks, right? Cause they got all the weird names for the size of the cups and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even like Starbucks that much to begin with just because I always thought it tasted weird. So when I got, you know, more used to doing these coffee nights and we would do different coffee shops around town, I began to, you know, learn about coffee and become more familiar with it. But still, I, I didn't care that much. Um, until I, uh, you know, moved, I, uh, you know, live in a different part of Anaheim these days. And there's this local shop that I go to in like the next city over. Cause I live on like the border of Anaheim, Buena Park. And there's this coffee shop in Buena Park. And I started going there and I couldn't tell if I was just being biased or not, but I was like, wow, this coffee seems really good. So, you know, slowly, but surely like, you know, friends come in from out of town or even my local friends mm-hmm. who don't even know about the shop, I'll bring them there who, and, and they know more about coffee than I do. So I'm just like, Hey, like, you know, I, I, I'm at this place. I, you know, think it's good. Like, you know, give me like the, the, the rundown if you think so or not. And then sure enough, everybody that I've taken here has been like actually pretty impressed with like how good their coffee is. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like I'm not just crazy and thinking that <laughs> I know more than I actually do about coffee. Like it, it's a legit spot. So I'm, you know, just being there, th- they serve this banana latte and, and I always like tweet about it and I tell people about it and they think it's like the strangest sounding thing, but wow. it's like interesting. So like when I go, I, when I bring people there, that's what I suggest. Yeah. And, and yeah, but it, it's been a hit with everybody that I brought there so far. Do you, do you know what, how they make it? I I'm so intrigued. Um, no, I know. Like, I just, I just boiled down bananas and, uh, yeah, I just boiled, I just boiled a bunch of bananas with the simple syrup mm-hmm. and I threw a vanilla bean in there and that was, I strained it. And then that was my syrup. Interesting. I don't know if they get that technical. I, I should ask, you know, like, um, my, uh, I, 
I'll I'll tell you about it off air, but um, I, I should ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I should ask. Yeah. But 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 it's really good. I, I I drink it multiple times a week. I had one yesterday before I went to L.A. I'll, I'm gonna have one right after this podcast. So it's pretty awesome. Sweet. But I'm just curious about you know you, you made that special. What you know kind of pushed you to create something like that? Um. So my uh, the one my one boss Ben. Uh, he, uh, his coffee life started in Buffalo, but when he moved to DC, uh, that's where it kind of blossomed for him. And he always told me the story of him making a banana simple syrup Mm -hmm. and him and I, did you, did you ever watch, uh, arrested development? No, I never saw it. Okay. Well, um, they sell frozen banana chocolate, chocolate covered frozen bananas. Uh, that's like their, one of their family businesses at the pier. And, um, the, one of the, the lines from the show is there's always money in the banana stand because, um, quite literally the walls are, are lined with tens of thousands of dollars inside of the banana stand. But, uh, not to spoil the show for you uh, or anybody, but, um, at one point they hire an arson to like burn down the banana stand. Uh, like one of the family members burns down the banana stand and the father is like, there was, thousands of dollars in that banana stand and uh ben and i always joke about um you know if my drawer is short like 10 cents he's like you know there's all this money in the banana stand and um bananas are a good fruit and uh i just thought it'd be i wanted to be different and weird with it because like we do s'mores lattes we like we boil down marshmallows to get like a um another simple syrup like a marshmallow syrup and uh I just want to be a uh, different with syrups and stuff. Mm-hmm. And obviously you're doing that all in house. Like how much earlier do you have to show up to create that for the customers or are you doing it like, you know, while the place is already open? Uh, kind of both. I mean, in preparation there, th- we did a lot of testing. I think I, I, uh, I bought a lot of bananas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, uh, I work it as like, it's the biggest of the three. It's, it's huge. And, uh, we have like, um, I call it the lobster pot. It's like a big 10 quart, uh, stainless steel pot that, um, you know, you do like a, um, I don't know what those be called. Like when you throw like lobster, you know, you boil lobsters, but, um, okay. and I would just throw bananas in and we would test it out. Uh, some days it's slow enough where you can, you know, do it peacefully, but some days it's just, you know, wicked busy and you got to take care of everybody and the syrup goes for a little too long, but, um, we definitely plan everything enough where, uh, the release date is, you know, at least two weeks ahead of like conception of the idea and the product. And, um, but you know, if you're running low and you got to make some, you just kind of go for it. Uh, but like typically I open, cafe so I'm, i get there at like quarter after six every morning um i get up around four and i go to bed at like 8 <laughs> p.m mm-hmm. uh a lot of my friends think i'm crazy but dude going to bed at 8 p.m is awesome i feel like a grandpa but um <laughs> yeah that's cra- crazy i can't life. do that i i, I can't do that yeah. i i'm <laughs> I, i'm like that guy that doesn't have enough minutes in the day to do what I want to do. So I'm like pushing it. I'm like, all right, I, if, as long as I get two hours of sleep, I'll get a nap in tomorrow. <laughs> I'll figure it out. And then like, I, I try to like, it, this is bad. This is why I, I say I'm, I'm going to get like you know, dementia when I'm older. Um, cause uh, if, if you don't get enough sleep, they say you'll get deme- de- uh, excuse me, dementia, which I, I think that's going to happen to me because I literally, um, uh, during the week or during my work week, I, I should say I get, about two hours of sleep a night and then all my like days off is like i'll catch up and i'll sleep in which is uh, still not even that much but you know it's what i have to do to try to get everything done that i want because there's just not enough time dude i'm with you like i i definitely leave work like not today even i didn't get everything done that i a monday is a big admin day for me like um catching up on emails doing payroll and social media stuff and um i didn't get it done today but that's what tomorrow is for sometimes 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you just try to, you know, kind of continue on and get it done. Uh, but it's like, yeah, this never ending process. I, I feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like it, it, it's been a long time since I've just been able to sit around and be bored because it's always something that I have to get done or prepare for. And then when you do sit around and are bored, you're asking yourself, why aren't I doing anything right now to be productive? Yeah, exactly. I, I miss those yeah. days when I was younger where I would just lay around and just be bored out of my mind, wondering where all my broke friends are. Um, Dude. But now it's yep. just like, yeah, like like to, to be able to do that, it seems like a luxury. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay, but um, when, when you test these uh, th- these syrups, are you uh, the sole tester, or do you have like a little you know group in house where like, hey, like I'm making this new syrup, like you got to help me out with this? Oh yeah, oh I gotta ask my 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 coworkers. Um, the my one my one co coworker, uh, he's SCA certified, which stands for the Specialty Coffee Association. So he is like, he's smart, mm-hmm. and uh, he's a really good palate. Um, and then everybody else is just like, when I, I love, I love the people I work with because when anybody has an idea, we, we stick to it, uh, or we go through with it, you know, even we'll try it out. If it's a syrup, we'll try it out. If it's a latte or, you know, anything. And, um, we're, we're always super honest with each other. And everyone was like, yeah, this is pretty good. Let's just do it. And of course I have my regulars if they're brave enough to try something that like a little bit out of their comfort zone. Um, someone actually suggested to add the vanilla bean in with the the simple, the banana syrup itself. Uh-huh. And that definitely made it. So, um, you know, I, I asked my, my, my regulars, my customers, as well as my employees. Cause like, if you, if you just kind of like test something yourself and you think it's awesome, like, could be awesome to you but not everybody else yeah i i, I definitely like being a regular at my coffee shop because it's it, it's nice to um go in there and uh you know know who's behind the counter and who's like you know able to make my coffee good because obviously you, know, you go yeah. places like things aren't consistent which is you know it's fair and like whatever but I, I just love going and uh knowing the people um who work at the shop that i go to because it's like they all do a really good job so i'm just like wow like how do they like, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like what like the whole like you know vetting process is to get a job there because like I, I've I've even thought about it. I'm like damn I, I love this place so much I, I should just work here but I don't have time. <laughs> that's that's the story actually for one of my coworkers. He, uh, him and his wife moved to the Buffalo area. I don't know four years ago I think, mm-hmm. and the first cap the first overwinter cafe opened. I think he said like two months after they moved here and they just started going there for coffee. Cause he like roasted coffee in his college dorm room with like this weird janky popcorn maker, him and his like roommates would roast coffee together in their, in their dorm room. And he was always interested and in, he was working at a church for a really long time. And then uh, our, the Williamsville cafe opened and um, he would come in a lot cause it was a lot closer to him and I could see like, he was, he was pretty upset. And I was like, Hey man, like what's going on? He goes, I got to quit my job. I hate it. I hate, I hate where I am. I'm like, work here. He goes, you know what? You're right. And so like he quit, we had an opening, he fit in and it just all like worked. And is he, he's still there to this day? Oh yeah. He helps, he helps roast too, which is awesome. That's something that he was really interested in but he works in the cafe most of the time he roasts once a week maybe two times a week if the other guy can't crazy that's well Mm -hmm. i guess he made the right choice to go in there um on that day that he was upset and just kind of found a new path yeah crazy it's 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 funny how that stuff works out yeah because you know uh, you get to a certain point in life where you think that this could be it and then you know you're locked into this job that you might hate but you're too scared to leave because you don't know what's next it's the unknown which is you know really scary for for a lot of people but for him to go in there frustrated and you know kind of stumble upon this opportunity i i I think that's awesome and it's cool that yeah this whole thing works out in weird ways and 
I'm just curious about the like history of, of where you work at. Like the the, the name's cool. I, I like the name Overwinter Coffee. Uh, do you know? Oh like, yeah. Do you know like the origin of it and like uh, there's like a mascot attached to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, the name Overwinter has a has a double meaning. So to overwinter plants is to help them survive the winter so that they're still, you know, fresh and healthy and prospering and, and all that stuff. Cause, um, you know, we have, we have some pretty rough winters here that last up until like last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, it was also a name that, uh, the two owners thought, um, the people of Buffalo could relate to eternally just being over winter all of the time, you know? Um, and the, our mascot, uh, it's a little Arctic Fox. Um, and that's just supposed to represent the people of Buffalo. Uh, you know, cause the Arctic Fox makes sure that their pack makes it through the winter, um, and is, you know, healthy and has everything they need. Just like, you know, we're the city of good neighbors. So we always just like check in on every, in on everybody. Um, I have a, I have a pretty funny story about the, the fox if you don't mind me sharing um there's a big there's a huge it's i don't, I don't even know dimensions maybe like five five to six feet long by maybe three and a half four feet tall canvas painting of the arctic fox in the the williamsville cafe the one that i work at and mm-hmm. it, was, it was really early one morning and this guy comes in through the front door and he just seemed, he just seemed like defeated. I don't know. It's like 7 AM. He probably isn't awake, you know, but he, it wasn't even that he just seemed like really like bummed. And I'm like, you know, he gets his coffee order and he goes and he sits down at a table and he's just like this at the table. He's just, it's just rubbing his face. Then he like slams his hands on the table. He leans back and he's looking at the, the Arctic Fox and he goes, what's with that fucking cat on the wall? And I'm just like, it's, I'm like, it's not, it's not a, a can I, I, I didn't even, can I swear? I just, yeah, just dropped that. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, oh, it's not, it's not a cat. It's a, it's a fox. And he goes, it's just so stupid. And I go, oh, okay, man, here's, here's your, here's your drink. Have a nice day. It was a really weird, really weird morning. <laughs> and that was it. He just got his drink and left. <laughs> yeah, he just got his drink and left. Interesting. Yeah, maybe yeah. he was trying to, you know, find the, that like, you know, eternal meaning of this painting on the wall, and just he got so <laughs> flustered. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, yeah. I wonder where he is to this day. I hope he's all right. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, so if if I'm walking into Overwinter, I'm a new customer. What would you recommend? First, ask if you if you want just like a cup of coffee or like a milk drink, like a latte or a cappuccino or something like that, and then I would go from there. Because um, uh, cup of coffee realm, we have like a couple different roasts, so I'd recommend a pour over of like one of the ones that intrigue you. Uh, and then if you wanted uh, a milk based drink, um, I'd be like, do you want like sweeter side or not so sweet? And then uh, we'd kind of just like narrow down the flavors and kind of like a choose your own adventure coffee kind of a deal. Um, I I am I just like co- I just like black coffee. That's just like what I enjoy. But um, when I'm in the mood for um, a milk drink, we uh, we use 100% dark organic maple syrup, and that uh, in an oat milk latte with some cinnamon just tastes like cinnamon toast crunch, mm-hmm. and it is awesome. That, that, that's my latte recommendation. If you want something kind of sweet. And, um, I learned that cinnamon, um, naturally deters your sweet tooth. So like if you eat a lot of cinnamon, it helps like curve that, uh, sweetness craving. So like, uh, you want like more savory things, which is I eat cinnamon every morning. So, and that makes a lot of sense because I, I don't have a big sweet tooth. Like eating cinnamon, like you do like the, the cinnamon challenge. No, <laughs> you remember that? Oh my God. I totally forgot about that. That's a throwback. No, um, 
I put it. I I put it in my oatmeal every morning. Oh, so god! Like yeah. I, I c- c- cinnamon o- in my oatmeal. Yeah. Okay. I I I just pictured yeah. you with like a like a teaspoon of cinnamon just or a, something, <laughs> just as like a, a morning ritual. Okay. I, oh I I've god. never heard that for it to curb your sweet tooth. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. One of one of my regulars, uh, Dave, told me. All right. Yeah, he's a smart guy. All right. Well, we'll believe Dave. I I haven't done my cinnamon research, but uh, for now, I'll I'll, I'll take Dave <laughs> I'll take Dave's word for it until I get uh, you know, um, until I get corrected if he's wrong. But that's cool. That's I, fair. I'm I'm, I'm definitely uh, you know a, a fan of what you do. You sent me a bag of coffee. Uh, I I definitely appreciate that. That was cool. It was good. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, and and going way back, this is what led us to this to uh, you know to this podcast because I, I uh, like mm-hmm. I said I'd been following you, but I'd never uh, said anything to you until you posted on that day, which was pretty cool. And as far as music, um, obviously, like I, I mentioned earlier that you play in space, which we'll get to, but you also play in, in a couple other bands. But one band that I just have like really gravitated towards is uh, your band, a uh, post prom which I, I think is really cool. I, I, I tell everybody I, I, I can about that band um, that I, you know, think, Yo, thank you. No, no, no problem. The, I, <laughs> I think the, the music's awesome. Cause I, you know, listen to, um, like, you know, pop punk and stuff like that. Uh, and like, you know, emo stuff. And with a, a lot of newer, uh, um, you know, bands from those genres, I just don't really click with. And I always feel like I'm always trying to find, um, like, like who's going to be the band to fill like my, uh, made a parade fix, right? Like, like th- those <laughs> types of bands. Cause you know, that, that, that's a good, like, like one of the like last of like that, you know, crop of bands that I still like listen yeah. to. But w- when I kind of search these days, I just feel like it's gotten either it's gotten like way cheesier or maybe I've just, uh, you know, don't really care that much, but I, I still kind of dabble in those genres that find something that I like, but it's just m- way more rare these days. So when I stumbled upon post prom, I'm like, Oh, this is actually really cool. Like, this is something that, I just instantly like kind of like clicked with and really enjoyed the the, the songs and just the, the the way you guys played them. So like I said, I, I always try to tell everybody that I know that likes that kind of music about you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love playing with those guys. It's uh, I've known Aiden, our singer, for a long time. He was a year above me at uh, we went to the same college. We went to uh, Fredonia. It's a it's a SUNY school, which is a state university of new york so it's there's suny and cuny schools uh cuny is city university so that's like all like in um like in the city like mm-hmm. down new york um and then suny schools are kind of like all uh scattered throughout the state um and ours is like an hour south of buffalo and then if you kept going like another 40 minutes you'd hit northern pennsylvania so um but um yeah i met aiden there and then we, he was a musician and like uh he was rapping at the time actually which i love um a- aiden was rapping and um my old band would like do stuff with him and um then post brown just kind of like came to and uh how long was that in the works before you guys actually had music recorded <sighs> hmm let's do some thinking here probably I think our first EP came out in 2018, if I had to guess. Yeah. I think, tra- yeah. Yeah. I- I'm looking at the band camp. Yeah. It says 2018. Oh, cool. Thanks. Good, good guess, John. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Char- uh, Charlie and Aiden were definitely working on songs together. And um, our friend Devin plays drums. And uh, I was definitely uh, the last edition because the band I was in at the time was kind of doing a lot of, I don't want to say more serious stuff, but like we were doing some DIY tours and, you know, pumping out a lot of music and I didn't want to fully commit, but I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll play bass for you guys until you find a bass player. And then um, we played a show one night in Fredonia and I was like, man, you know what? I really like playing with you guys. I'll just, I'll just play bass for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll just, I'll, I'll just be in the band. And um, then, um, we recorded with our friend Jay at GCR and um, that was my first like real recording experience ever. Like I've, I've never been in like a, I mean, I've recorded music before, but it was like in, in, the GCR is owned by uh, Robbie Takak of the Goo Goo Dolls. So like that's his studio. That's like the studio in Buffalo. And um, mm-hmm. 
it was a uh, it was a very cool experience. Yeah, and shout out uh, GCR. I mentioned on the podcast before, friends and final declaration recorded there. Yes, yeah, they did. Yeah, that's awesome. And so the last release, <clears throat> excuse me, came out September twenty twenty one. Uh, who you pretend to be, which is super awesome. Uh, are you guys, uh, you know, working on new stuff? Or are you trying to, you know, play more shows? Because I'm, you know, this is like, you know, post prompt like all new to me, so I'm trying to play catch up and yeah. figure out what's going on with the band. Um, we're, I think, we're working on new stuff. I don't know. Um, Eden was, um, so Dan, who plays in Space, he drums in Space. He also plays guitar in a band called super American and they were doing some tours with, um, hot Mulligan and they did another one with another band that I am forgetting. But, um, Aiden, um, who sings in post prom was, uh, TMing for them. He went out of them on the road with them for a while. And then once he got back, uh, Charlie, um, our guitar player, uh, he's a ski instructor. So once ski season ends here, uh, he just goes to Utah for a few months and, um, he like got back like two weeks ago mm-hmm. and we all, we all, uh, hung out for the first time in a long time. Um, I don't know, maybe like a week or so ago, Aiden, uh, his last name is liquor, Aiden liquor. And, uh, he, <laughs> he has this, he does this thing called uh liquor deck Friday, which is you just go to Aiden's deck and you just hang out. Um, and Charlie and me and Devin and we go, we just hang out and like, it was, it was cool to see everybody. So we'll probably be working on some new stuff soon, but um, yeah, we're, we're super proud of that record that like songs on there, like Boston and Jessica hates the future and um, headrest were songs that were written in like 2018. And then they were put on that record. Like we were, when we were writing those songs, we were like, these aren't EP songs. These are LP songs. So um, I'm glad we were finally able to put those out. And how did you make that distinction? Like so far in advance? I think it just had to do with like Aiden having more of a plan, Mm -hmm. you know, like he, he always wanted to write an album. Um, and those songs just seemed a bit too powerful to have on like a four or five song release. Okay. You know, like he would, th- those were not to like sound pompous, but those are some pretty like well-written songs. And like, I, 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 I could see where his head was at where like he needed those or he wanted those to be with other very well-crafted songs and more of like a, a, a storyline, um, configuration okay that's fair well at least you know it, mm-hmm. it's cool that you were able to hold out for so long because you gotta think three years time and you know you guys put out stuff in between so to be able to sit on those and for them to you know fit with the record they, they don't sound old or um, outdated or anything so uh, it definitely all works yeah um oh shoot what was i going to mention something about oh so we had even even more time because like uh we uh family built a cabin like in the early 2000s uh kind of near fredonia it's in a place called chautauqua and we would go post prom would go there to do pre-production for uh material we were working on um so we went to the cabin and we did pre-production for the album uh who you pretend to be and um like the songs were recorded they're all ready to go and we send them over to jay we're like hey dude like this is it this is what like we're gonna do this is the album and he goes great like let's book some time and um we booked we booked studio time for like mid march 2020 and then jay hit us with the hey guys we're probably gonna have to put this off for a little while we don't know how long but it was actually kind of it, it, it worked out really well because there were a uh, few things in certain songs that we weren't sold on, you know? So like, um, and we were all fortunate enough to have re- like recording capabilities from our homes or apartments or wherever we were living. So 
Charlie, uh, who like did all of our demoing, would strip down like parts of the demos we weren't sure of, and he'd send them to us, and we would put our parts on, and you know, worked out. And now we're uh, everything is how it should be with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it came together well. I, I definitely like it, and I'm hoping, um, you know, maybe at some point, catch you guys somewhere, either uh, live on the East Coast or maybe out west. I, I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm gonna say East Coast. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if uh, my guys will be down to head out anytime soon. You know, I, I would love to see Post Prom do a string of shows with this other New York band. Um, they're this band from, uh, they're from Long Beach, New York. I, I don't know if you ever heard of Long Beach down there. It's like kind of like near like Long Island. Or maybe it's, sure, even, yeah. maybe it's even online. I don't even know if I'm being I'm honest. But it, it, there's this band called Family <laughs> Dinner, and you can see uh, we, we, you can barely see it. I, I have a family, family dinner. yeah, Family Dinner tote bag right here. I'm a longtime supporter of that band. They've been on the podcast before, but I, I think they're such a sick band. I, I feel like you two would pair really well together. I, I think it'd be cool to uh, cool. see you guys go on tour, or, or just even like a weekend or something. I, I think it would be awesome. I'll have to pitch that to them. Um, Post Prom doesn't really tour. Um, I don't know. Like, I would love to, and Aiden would love to, um, but it, it may not just be in our cards. Okay. All right. Well, maybe not tour. Post prom invades Long Island. Let's see. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Okay. All right. I'll I'll put the word out there. I'll I'll, I'll reach out to <laughs> to to the bands and see see who, who would be down. Because like, yeah, I feel like. Um, you guys would, I, I would just like to see like, you know, you guys go down there, play with family dinner and like stand still Somerset thrower, all the, Oh yeah. Yeah. Does, I, I think it'd be a cool vibe. That would be. Yeah. I, yeah, man, dude, uh, post prom and stand still on a bill would work pretty well. Mm, I agree. Cause like, yeah. All right. Well, we'll put it out there. You know, it's out there in the universe now. People are going to hear this, and the, yeah, the, the the hopefully the wheel start moving. I'll uh, you know make some suggestions, see who's willing to do what. We'll at least try. Cool. I'm about it. I just I just love playing rock shows. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and as far as like obviously <laughs> everyone in the band so busy, um, how do you feel like the reception is? Uh, you know, from the fans for this last record. Uh, it was, I mean, when it happened, it was awesome. Like all of our friends loved it. Like, uh, our friend Brett always says that his favorite genre of music is bands recorded by Jay Z Bricky, mm-hmm. um, which is the uh, post prom, uh, Pentimento. Um, Jay was the assistant engineer on the last two ETID records. Um, you know, final declaration, um, I'm trying to think of some other Buffalo bands that Jay has recorded, but I'm just blanking well kept things, you know? Um, and like all of our group of friends were like super receptive and we loved it. And like, um, our friend Ben, uh, Lieber, uh, who helped us with the visuals and everything for the glass video and the album art. Um, he, you know, posted about it and helped us gain some traction, but like, um, yeah, it was it was received really well. I definitely think that it's kind of like on a come down, which is why I want to write more music, you know, and uh, get back up there. Yeah, no, I get it, and especially for someone like me who's uh, you know obviously uh, late to the party. I'm just like, all right, this is cool. <laughs> I've uh, you know soaked up this record and everything before, and I'm just you know kind of wondering when's the next stuff going to drop? When's the next single, music video, or something? It'll be worked on. Sooner, th- sooner than later, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I-, I hope for anyone who's listening to this, who's the slightest bit curious, please go check out Post Prom. Super awesome band. But I want to move on to Spaced. Obviously, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the episode, I- I'm a huge fan of the band, but I- I'm curious from your perspective, um, how did uh, that band come together? Uh, Donnie Arthur. Uh, our fearless leader, uh, he was tattooing me one day and, you know, I think he just asked me if I ever like, or what I, maybe what I thought about hardcore music. And at the time I wasn't really like into it. Um, but I was like, yeah, dude, like I'll, I'll 
write some music with you, you know, you know, we're friends, let's hang out and write music. And, um, Dan, our drummer works with Donnie and, uh, we just got together in his basement one day and we're just kind of like writing songs and taking voice memos of it. And then we wouldn't like, we wouldn't practice for a couple weeks. And then he's like, Hey, let's get back at it. And, you know, it was, it was very uh, spontaneous when it happened, but when it happened, it was awesome. And it gelled like super, super well. And then, um, then I was like, Hey, like we can kind of do like, crappy demos on my laptop you know like we could just record straight in dan can play uh keyboard drums and we can make it sound like like kind of a recording so because donnie's like yeah like we got to get some vocals on here and um that's where lexi came in and our friend joe uh is a absolutely insane guitarist he is a wizard with his pedal board and he just knows how to make it sound like this as i feel like that's the only way i can describe it sometimes joe makes the songs feel like wiggling your fingers mm -hmm. yeah no yeah it, 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 it's cool to see uh you guys get more busy as things progress because i, I you know i, I kind of got in contact with donnie because i had on ron on the podcast from you know uh, final declaration and uh, mm -hmm. he, he had mentioned yeah he's like it, it'd be cool to you know do something with Donnie and I was like, yeah, 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 like I'm super down. And then we eventually became Instagram friends. And then I remember he had, um, he had sent me the, the space demo, like the, the day it had dropped, but I was under the impression that it was already out. Cause I had seen the logo and stuff floating around on social media. And I thought it was one of those things like, oh, okay, this new band dropped, like I'll get to it eventually. But Donnie had sent it to me right before I was about to head out to LA. I was going to go uh, hang out with one of my friends. And I was like, all right, like, let me just kind of put this on while I get to the freeway. Cause I, I don't live that far from the freeway. And I just saw like the runtime on the demo wasn't that long. So I was like, mm -hmm. all right, like, like, let me just check it out. And then just like, you know, from <laughs> leaving my house until I got to LA, I had the demo on repeat and I was trying to figure out, and, and that, it was like a, like a two hour drive, you know, cause I, I was, <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, I, I was going to like this, this, this weird part to, to meet a friend and. And like I like the whole time I was listening, I'm like, yeah, this is this is pretty good. And then I, I was going through all, all these weird stages. I'm like, no, this is pretty good. And I was like, wait, am I biased because it's you know Donnie? And I'm like, no, it's not because it's Donnie. This is actually pretty good. And I, I just remember thinking, like, yeah, this is pretty badass. And I remember I had sent it to like Scott Vogel. I'm like, yo, like check this out. Like I know you just moved back to to Buffalo. There's like this new band. You should check it out. And, uh, and I hope he doesn't get mad that I said this, but he's already. He was like, yeah, like, don't worry. Like I'm going to their, their first show. You guys, play. I forget that, that first show that you guys played. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm already on it. And I'm like, okay. I was like, I'm not surprised. Cause he's like, you know, <laughs> he's really in tune with what's going on, like in hardcore. So shout out to Scott Vogel. But, uh, but yeah, but I was, I, I just was just trying to, you know, from that point, me, um, you know, liking it so much, I wanted to, to tell everybody about it. And sure enough, I, you know, sent it to so many different people and, uh, you know, and just by the strength of the music itself, you're like you guys are where you're at today, which I think is like really awesome. Yeah, thank you, uh, <laughs> dude. Two uh, two hours with a man. It probably was like what eight minutes long. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you had to listen to that so many times. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I really wanted to to uh, know if I like it or if I was being biased because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And also it, it, it takes time to actually like bond with a record and to, to know if you like it or not. Cause sometimes you might not like it the first spin, but then, you know, just on a different drive, a different day, like you kind of like understand it better, but just, yep. you know, f first go, I was like, this is, this is pretty fucking cool. I, I was like, you know, pleasantly surprised. Thank you. Yeah. Those, those songs are super fun to make. And, uh, we'll just keep making more, you know? <laughs> and was there ever a point where it, it kind of hit you like, oh shit, like people actually like what, what we're doing. Cause you know, if you look at what you guys have done so far with the, uh, the amount of shows, the different places you've been, obviously, you know, w working with, uh, you know, numerality zine and now you're, you're going overseas, which bands dream of, and you guys are, you know, doing it like, you know, pr pretty early in your career. Yeah, I like uh, think that the the demo came out like early August, if not like August first, I think. And I was at work 
and it, it was busy and like i just like i remember my phone my phone just kept going and like space was just like i just see like spaced space like notifications piling up and i'm like i can't like deal with this right now so i just like threw my phone uh you know somewhere and i do not disturb and i'm just like making drinks and stuff and then i go back and i'm just like oh man like people are like listening to this and it's not just like our friends you know mm. it, it was like a lot of people and then dan sent that thing uh that uh uh chad from newfound glory posted it in his story i was like what is happening like it's it, it hasn't been 24 hours and it's just like everywhere and I, I didn't really get what was happening and then we i think we were driving to play a show in brooklyn and um we had the phone we had the phone call with nick from new morality and i'm just like what is i don't know man it just it just kind of happened all so fast and i like i think the and then the whole like europe thing out of nowhere and it was just kind of, it's still kind of hard to take in sometimes because we haven't even been a band for a year and like we're touring Europe. And that's like, you know, when you're a kid and you're, you, you're playing music, you're like, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to be a rock star. And like you play like a bunch of like crappy DIY shows all over the country. And you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then like something like this happens and you're like, holy crap. It's just like, it all paid off. And, uh, um, it's surreal honestly and um i'm just having a ton of fun and obviously <laughs> it, it is a big deal to go overseas uh, and and uh, you've never done that before right to play music no no um, yeah no. O o overseas yeah um well i was i was fortunate enough to go to the uk at one point um my dad he's retired now but he, he was a medical physicist so long story short uh took uh seeds and radiated them and would implant them in people's bodies to kill cancer cells that's what my dad did for a living mm -hmm. and um the machines that he uh used were called linear accelerators and those were built over in uh england and the company who built them invited him over to like see how they were made and like be part of the factory and like um, it wasn't like some like ginormous factory. It was like a group of like 10 to 15 guys that built these machines, you know, over the course of a few months. Um, so he went over there for a while and was like working with these guys. And, um, he surprised my sisters and I, I have three sisters. He surprised us by flying us out for, um, a week and we just like hung out. So it was cool, but like, um, nothing as expansive as going to like all these different countries, mm -hmm. you know, um, and being an adult as well uh <laughs> i was maybe 15 at the time when i did that so like i was still reined in you know i couldn't go out and do stuff but now i'm um, i'm older and can go do stuff on my own yeah. so it's, it's a, exciting yeah it's, it's definitely a cool opportunity and i'm stoked for you guys to be able to get out there and get in front of like you know a, a whole new crowd uh, i'm sure people will be into the music but it's just um, I, I just think it's very exciting for you guys to be able to travel that far and be able to you know play those songs in front of like just people from that side of the world mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be cool it's gonna be a cool experience see how we're received um but um i think i think the comeback the comeback kid like pairing will go well at two you know they're they're cool they're a cool style of hardcore that i think uh we we balance each other out or you know play off each other well rather mm -hmm. okay and you mentioned uh you know chad ball from newfound glory New newfound glory is like one of my favorite bands ever and uh seeing you guys get announced to play that uh, sticks and stones fest i thought was pretty pretty wild because uh you, you think back to that um, you know, uh, post from Chad Ball to you guys now, like, you know, playing with Newfound Glory, it's just kind of like, you know, kind of like a full circle type thing. Yeah. And it's Newfound Glory is also one of Dan's favorite bands. Uh, Four Year Strong is one of Lexi's favorite bands. Uh, I love Piebald so much. So I'm excited to see Piebald. And um, it's, yeah, I, uh, 
most of the time I'm at a loss for words, but I'm just always really excited all of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just a few weeks away, which is like pretty insane to think about. You're right. I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's what, like for uh, six weeks, four weeks. Yeah. Maybe not no, even. I don't know. No, th- th- I think it's less than that. Cause we're like mid May. It's the beginning of Mid-May. June. June. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like two and a half weeks away. Mm-hmm. Yep, cool. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And are, are you guys uh, yeah. like doing anything on the way? Or are you guys just driving straight to? We are. We're playing. We have a show in Binghamton uh, on that Thursday, mm-hmm. uh, and then there's a show in Connecticut on the Friday before. Saturday is Sticks and Stones Fest, and uh, Sunday, I believe we're playing Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and then we drive home. Okay. Got it. Got it. Oh yeah. You guys are playing the, the um, show in Connecticut with uh, broken vow. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, I was trying to, to, to fly out to, uh, because I, I, the, the, the dream was, and here's a, you know, a sad news. The dream was to fly out for that broken vow gig. Cause obviously like I've never seen space. I want to see space. I love Adrian Montclair, so many good bands on that bill. And then, mm-hmm. Um, go to that show and then the plan was to go to Philly the next day for the barbecue but flights are just uh, just way more than I want to pay right now because I literally just spent so much money on seeing twice uh, and that was just like you know an attack on my bank account but it was worth it it was a great life experience I will never not see twice when they come to California Um, maybe I'm sure that was last night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night was yeah. what was night two. So I'm, I, I am very happy that I went to both nights because when they came back in February, I only went to one night, uh, and I was kicking myself in the ass. I was like, damn, I should have went to both nights. This is like uh, kind of a bummer. Um, so I, I told myself next time they come through, if that they do multiple dates, I'm gonna go. And sure enough, I, I went to, um, and they only did two nights in LA. They came from, uh, you know, South Korea did two nights in LA, then they went home and I went to both nights and it, it was definitely worth it. it. It was really cool to see like night one, obviously. Uh, and I, I, it was kind of like, I, I totally get it from like their standpoint. They literally flew in. I, th- I think maybe the, like a day or two before like the actual show and for them to have to like adjust with the time difference and stuff. Night one. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. Night one, I, I could tell some of them had like low energy, which is totally understandable. But then night two was like, okay, I see um, everyone, you know, uh, is like way more perky, uh, way more energy and things like even on like a technical side, like no audio issues, the the, the lighting got better. So it, it was something it awesome to be able to, uh, you know, see both. And obviously they bring out like, like at the end, they bring out like this wheel with songs that they don't play that often. And they would spin it and then you could uh, whatever. And uh, this like when I saw them in February, they, they would actually spin it and let it land on whatever song and they would play it. But it seemed like this time they were way more like selective. They're like, oh, like, let's just play this one. And then like they would kind of like go through <laughs> it like slowly and see which songs like the people in the crowd actually wanted to hear. And we got to hear some like classic songs that um, some people thought we would never hear again. It was actually pretty cool. And, like because like in both nights we got different songs. So I, I got to hear like like more songs from the discography that I've never even heard live before. Oh, that's awesome. That's super awesome. Do you, and you, your outfit was impeccable last night. No, oh, thank you. You looked dressed to the nines. Thank you. I, I, I definitely appreciate that. Got, got a lot of uh, comments. It, it, it was, it, it was nice. It, it was hot during the first part, you know, wearing like a, a, a suit in like 90 degree weather. It, it was an outside cause it was an outdoor stadium, but like towards the evening, once the sun set and it cooled off, I was very happy because it got really cold and, being layered up, it was definitely like a, a benefit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's one of those things that'll pay off in the end. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but going back to uh, me wanting to go to those shows, I, I just it, it doesn't make sense for me right now. So yeah, so sadly, yeah. I, I have to miss the Broken Bow gig and the barbecue. There will always be more shows. That's what I I, I always tell. Like if my my friends or family can't make shows, I'm like, there's always going to be more shows. Yeah, I'm I'm dying for the day that space makes it out west. Seems in- inevitable Dude, at this point. I know we were trying to, um, we were trying to this summer. It just didn't work out, but um, it will. I'm sure. You know, mm. 
Yeah, because we'll figure it out. If you guys can make it to Europe, you guys can make it to the West Coast. I don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the, the the logic that I have in my brain when I look at like your um, routing schedule. I'm like, okay, and I was like, uh, maybe not now, but um, soon it'll, it'll it'll happen. Yeah, dude. I mean, if we go really far that way, we can go really far that way. It just yeah, it can happen soon. You know? Okay, and more recently, you guys announced that you're going on a run with uh, Like Pacific, which is pretty cool. Can you talk about, um, you know, your reaction to that announcement? Yeah, it's so. Uh, Lexi knows the vocalist of uh, Like Pacific, um, well, in, enough to hold, you know, casual conversation with them, mm-hmm. um, Jordan and. Um, we we found out that uh, they kicked a band off of that tour and or a band had to drop. I don't know what the situation was exactly. And um, Lexi, it's a joke. Uh, they were like, "Hey, uh, do you guys want to do this?" And I looked at it. And I'm like, oh, "Man, like I would I would love to, but it just didn't seem like it that it didn't seem like I could with work and everybody else taking off kind of around that time." Um, so quick sidebar, um, my two bosses don't live in New York state. Mm -hmm. So me and the, uh, other girl, Sydney, who manages the other, uh, cafe, um, we're kind of like the the point people for the cafes, you know, we're handling everything on the ground here. And, um, Sydney is also going to be out of town during that time. So Sydney does all the wholesale stuff like um, for all of our wholesale clients and she does all the deliveries and online orders. So when she is gone, I have to do that. And Sydney's going to be gone. And I'm just like, dude, I don't know. Cause I have to do, I have double the responsibility now. And Lexi goes, okay. Like I knew it was kind of like a silly little dream, but um, we'll see. And I was just like, okay. And then uh, I think a day went by and Lexi goes, yo, they kind of really want us to do this. Jordan is very adamant about having us on this. And I was like, all right, I'll see. I'll see what I can do. And uh, Donnie, whose business kind of also uh, thrives off of him being there. Like he's also the guy for the pharmacy. Um, he he kind of broke it down for me. He goes, John, if if we you know, do these three days in a row, we can come home for two days, we can work those two days, be at work the next day, leave after work, come home that night to work the next morning, and then go to this show. I was like, dude, maybe this could work. So I called Sydney, and I was like, hey, uh, we got this opportunity. Let me work this out with you. Like, and because I do all the scheduling as well. So I was like, we broke it down, and we made it work. And I was just like, yeah, let's do it. So uh, even if I couldn't, I'm sure they would have found someone else. Like I, they had to uh, space played some shows without me uh, and Donnie for that matter, just because I, I, I wasn't allowed to leave New York state because I had a surgery and they were like, if you leave New York, you're going to get COVID and bring it back. And I'm like, New- COVID is in New York. I don't know what that has with, you know, me leaving, whatever, whole different story. Mm-hmm. But um they would have found a bass player if I couldn't have gone, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't super worried about me, but, um, once we got like the five of us confirmed, um, uh, it was just up to the mercy of, uh, Lake Pacific's booking agent, I guess, to see if, cause we can't, we're not doing the whole thing. We're not doing the last three or four days. Mm-hmm. And, um, cause we were kind of worried like, Oh, if, we're, if they don't want us, if, if we can't do the whole thing, they're going to find another band who can. And if that's what it is, that's what it is. And it just ended up, they're just not going to have another band for the last three or four days. And, um, very exciting. I remember seeing like Pacific in, um, at the Agora theater a long time ago, early 2017 with the, it was knuckle puck neck deep and state champs. And Lake Pacific was opening, and uh, it was really cool. It, and it's just really cool to see now them headlining and that really cool record out, and um, they're doing cool stuff. So I'm excited. 
yeah and, and it's it's exciting to um see you guys on that run because uh when i look at that flyer i'm like okay cool i'm not typical for a hardcore band to go on that kind of tour but i think it's a um, a, a cool thing to go and play in front of people who may have never even heard of hardcore before who probably um, may have never even heard of space before but to, to go out there and kind of give exposure to like a different type of music to those kids and maybe you know uh, lead someone down the path of getting into hardcore when they probably never even thought about it is definitely a, a cool thing to to think about because for for a band like space to, to be on that bill to be the you know the odd one out i i think can be a cool thing sometimes because you know people are gonna be oh cool that's like the cool hardcore band on the pop punk bill like that's super sick because even like you've seen it vice versa where there's like oh there's the cool pop punk band on the hardcore bill so i i, I think it's like a, a a cool opportunity for space to be able to do something like that yeah me too it'll it'll be a really cool really cool time you know like like you said, it, it's it's not very often you see a hardcore band on pop punk um, tours, so it'll be cool to kind of like uh, shock some people real quick, and then you know they listen to everything else. But um, it'll be cool. I love I love touring, and I love uh, man. I'm just really excited about a lot of stuff. If you could not tell, that's um, I feel like a puppy sometimes. I'm just like I'm ready to go all the time. I love having fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just ready to play shows. Yeah. And shout out to to you guys and shout out to Donnie for helping like kind of like open your eyes about the routing and trying to like explain how things could work. So Oh my gosh, yes. He he was my knight in shining armor that day. Cause it's it's really cool. The only I really only have to miss like I think two two or three days of work. And it's like a Friday. It's like the first Friday and Saturday and then the following Saturday or something like that. And, um, cause those first three shows are in Canada and then Monday we're home. So I'm working Monday, Tuesday, the show is in Pittsburgh. So like we're working Monday morning, driving to Pittsburgh to play the show, to come home because Wednesday is the Buffalo show. And then Thursday we have off. So I'm, I swap shifts. I normally have off Thursday. So I'm working Thursday instead of Friday. And then Friday we have a show somewhere. Yep. It it's, it's working out. Yeah, no, it, it, it's cool too that the routing is, you know, close enough to make that doable. Yeah. That's the, one of the main reasons we're not doing the last couple of days is because that would have been too far mm -hmm. for us to go and then have to come back. Um, so I very fortunate that they were uh, letting us do that as well because um, they could have just said no. Yeah, hundred percent. That's awesome, though. That's cool. I'm definitely very happy to hear, uh, you know, that you're able to make that work. And I was stoked when I saw the flyer because I had heard about it before it got announced, um, and to see that it actually went through, I, I thought it was like a really cool thing. And as far as, uh, you know, that run, I, I'm always curious, uh, are, are you guys going to, uh, you know, do new merch for that? Or are you guys just going to uh, kind of recycle some of the stuff that you've had? You know what? I'm not too sure. Uh, Donnie is constantly tossing images in our group chat and um, our friend Biff prints all of our merch um, for us. And like, sometimes we'll just like, uh, we were supposed to go to the studio today, but we're now we're going Wednesday now, I think. And like, I remember one day Donnie just like, he rolled up in his car and he's like, you guys want to see what I just got printed? We're like, we didn't even know, but this is awesome. And it was the, the, I call it the flower power hoodie, the, the, the two step, the two, two stepping flower, mm -hmm. um, that's on a hoodie. Um, I think we're just, I don't know if we're going to have any new merch. I would like to but I think the plan is to kind of just like, actually, I don't want to speak on behalf of the band, but um, I, I think the plan is to kind of like liquidate all that we have so that we can, because our, I think our merch plan for Europe is to talk to crew cuts and see if they are going to, if they could print stuff for us so we could just pick it up there instead of shipping everything over. Mm. Yeah. Cause you don't so to... like use, you don't want yourself to get held up in customs or anything weird. Yeah. So 
hopefully we can do that because yeah you're right i would not want all of that to get held up that would be a bummer <laughs> yeah i i just shipped some shirts to scotland and i didn't hear anything for a while because I, I i was shipping stuff to a friend and i had reached out i'm like yo did you ever get those shirts that i shipped to you and thankfully uh, and this is like months later but uh, thankfully they were able to get through customs like no problem and they got the shirts cool that's good but it took a little longer than expected um I don't I, I, honestly I don't know because I, I just had asked like way <laughs> later so I'm good yeah I, I had tracking but I, I I never checked up on it um but yeah but I but there has been times where like I, I worked for a, a, a merch company and like you know things get stuck in customs and then we get screwed over and they never leave customs so we have to you know ship some some more stuff and it gets it turns into like a really big headache yeah, uh, man, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Does not sound fun. <laughs> okay, well, that's awesome that um, you're able to you know go on that tour and uh, you know uh, I, I'm sure you're, you're going to gain a lot of new fans because uh, you know the, the music's good uh, and I'm sure uh, you know you guys will have a good performance and people will be super stoked on you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, I'm very curious because I, I have to ask, you know, I'd mentioned, you know, uh, you know, asking about those uh, figures behind you and you have the, the wall, the, the I, I'm assuming that's like a blanket or a throw over on the couch th that you're sitting yes. on. Um, for me being a super casual Star Wars fan, right? I, I I'd watched it growing up. Like my mom got me into it because she was, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, really into it, but I didn't really care for it that much. But then getting older, um, had friends that were like diehards and i just um it just never really made sense to me uh and trying to get into it like in my later years with like the the newer trilogy which, which was like okay i i thought mm -hmm. um you know obviously like people have their own opinions about it but then even with like these disney plus series which were pretty cool i, I still haven't watched the book of um, boba fett and then i know obi-wan's coming out um but i'm just curious um like for someone like you who seems like they're a diehard, uh, like what are your current thoughts on like you know the state of Star Wars? Uh, I, I I don't think it's kind of like ever been better. And it shout out to Dave Filoni and John Favreau for kind of saving the I shouldn't say saving the franchise because mm -hmm. you know what like I the sequel trilogy was definitely not incredibly popular by um some original trilogy or prequel fans but it it took me a while to do you know what i did i i saw seven in theaters and i loved it mm -hmm. i saw uh eight and i was like i don't know how i felt about that and i didn't watch it for a long time i i kind of felt like i was losing my love for star wars for some stupid reason and then Nine was coming out and I was like, okay, I'm going to watch right, right before I go see the premiere, I'm going to watch seven, eight, and then I'm going to go see nine. And that's what I did. And I was like, whoa, I have a better understanding and a new respect for all of these movies. And then I just, I saw nine a few more times and, um, uh, current state of star Wars though, is just like, it's, it's super awesome. The Mandalorian uh an unbelievable show book of boba fett was really awesome um and then i can't tell you how excited i am for obi-wan he is uh he's the best he <laughs> i'm super excited and um you know even the tv shows like the clone wars and bad batch and rebels uh really do a lot um for not only kids but like i don't know people my age and our age you know like uh Clone Wars is a really cool show and Rebels in some ways can be even cooler. And I thought it was super funny that um, I believe Rebels premiered as a Disney XD show. So it was meant for kids. And mm -hmm. the first season is so uh, kid oriented. You know, they have like the, oh man, moments and stuff like that. And uh, but the um, it gets heavy, it gets really heavy. You know, there's a lot of like morale uh things and like destiny choices and you know toying with the dark and the light and that can be you know related to 
uh, when you're a kid, you know, like, I want to do something bad because I'm angry, but you know, like, I know I'm better than this kind of a thing, you know? Um, but I'm just really excited about star Wars all the time. And, uh, I, I am, a, I'm a huge fan, avid fan, big nerd about it. Um, I have countless figures. <laughs> I also, I also love Lego. So I have like a lot of star Wars Lego stuff too. Um, yeah. Now I'm curious, uh, do you have the uncle, um, uh, Ben up there? Uncle Ben, uncle Ben's actually over here. Right here. Okay. Yeah. I actually got this guy, uh, from a comic book store when we were in Scotia on the last run we did with, um, guardrails and jive bomb. There was a cool little comic book store like down the street from the venue and uh, that's what i like to do when we go places i like to find joe really likes comics so joe and i find comic book stores um coffee shops obviously mm-hmm. uh lexi loves to find bookstores um we always find ourselves in malls wherever we go we just become mall rats for a couple hours and just that's like, awesome. wander around i love random malls. Cities, malls and like go to the food court and, uh, uh, go to the sports store. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a ton of fun. And then, um, Lexi is always on the hunt for Boba and bookstores. Um, I think I said that, but, uh, yeah, I love, I love finding, uh, toys, you know, I love them. And Joe, Joe always searches for records. Hmm. And, oh, at the i feel like when star wars was like way more active like a couple years ago when there was like you know we were getting a star wars movie like every year i remember Mm -hmm. when it was like cool we got a movie from like the new trilogy then rogue one then you know back to the trilogy then han solo then that kind of like fucked everything up um (laughs) do you miss that because i i loved like the idea that we were getting like you know they kind of laid out the blueprint of what's to come but then obviously they kind of like pulled back and were like all right like we're not going to do that anymore um like were you in favor of that or do you kind of like uh you know things like a little more spread out i think that uh i i loved it i loved getting new star wars content like every year it was always super exciting because like right around Christmas time is the most jolly time of the year. You're just really excited. And mm. star Wars was also coming out. You know, it was, it was all, it was always awesome. And, uh, I loved it, but I did think they kind of learned, I think Lucasfilm and, uh, Disney at the time, probably. Right. Yeah. I think they kind of learned their lesson of like always pumping out content. Didn't always mean great things. Mm-hmm. Um, rogue one, is one of my favorite movies of all time not even star wars just movie Mm -hmm. and if you're not a star wars fan just watch rogue one because it's everything that a movie should be in my opinion it's just it's a great great film um but i i'm kind of okay with where things are now with releasing like uh shows and a little bit kind of like spread out you know what i really like is how the shows are being released um an episode of a week because mm-hmm. i really miss watching shows on cable you know and like oh new episode friday night at 8 p.m new ben 10 episode or something you know what i mean like it was always a new episode um this night and that's how it is with um uh that's how it was with boba fett and mando that's how it is going to be with obi-wan i'm pretty sure Mm -hmm. So, um, it's exciting. The anticipation builds up, you know, and, um, it's, it's exciting. And I, uh, have come to learn not that, um, I don't like movies because I do like movies, but, um, I'm more show oriented. I think I like, I'm a big show guy, uh, Dan and Joe and Donnie for that matter, talk about movies all the time. They're big horror buffs, but I just like, I like TV shows. They're easy for me to watch. And, um, that's another reason why I'm liking everything that's going on now. Cause it's a lot of TV shows. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I, I do agree that with like, you know, an episode coming out um, every, or a, a new episode coming out every week, you know, definitely helps build, uh, you know, that anticipation and kind of generates more hype because like, I, I used to love when Netflix would do the, you know, here's, here's your, here's your whole season. 
you know, consume it mm-hmm. at, at your own time. Um, but then I, I found to kind of get lazy because I'm like, okay, it's th- it's all there. I'll get to it eventually. Um, you know, outside of the shows that I love, like when Daredevil like dropped, I'm like, all right, this is it. Like, oh my gosh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I uh, told the story before. Like, I had friends from uh, Vegas who were like visiting me that day because like we we're going to go to Disneyland and um, shit. And I, I told them, I'm like, hey, like you guys came on this day, like we have to watch. Uh, you know, episode one, because I've been you know dreaming of something like this for a really long time. And then, uh, mm-hmm. you know, forcing them to watch it with me, it, it kind of turned them on to to start watching and, uh, you know, made them just oh, as obsessed as I was. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. But um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. But then also, I felt like I was kind of like in competition with like everybody else. I mean, should I got to watch this all before someone like, you know, spoils it. And, you know, people who listen to this podcast regularly knows that I don't mind spoilers, but for some reason with things like that, I was just like, I would just like feel like out of touch or out of tune because like, okay, shit, everybody's already, you know, binged the season. Like I don't have time to binge it. So I, I got to like, you know, force myself to watch it. But then I was, I, I found I was watching it just to watch it. I wasn't really, you know, I'm um, like absorbing everything and really, you know, being able to enjoy it. I, I felt like it, it was like more of like a, like a task than something that I wanted to do for fun. Yeah. And that, that's not how that, stuff should feel you know you you should feel excited about it and that's kind of how um i am with shows sometimes i've definitely i get on a big show kick for a while i was watching gotham for a really long time and then come season like midway through season three or season four i just like i stopped because it was just like all right you know get home from work have a snack watch gotham but like it's just like hitting the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. I need, I needed something new. So. Yeah. I, I, I had to tap out with Gotham. Like I, I thought it was good for a little bit, but then it just got kind of like, uh, got kind of boring. So I, I gave up on it. I never finished it. Yeah. I don't know if I, if I will either it, um, I'm with you. It just kind of got repetitive. Um, with like people coming back to life all the time. And it's just like, Oh, it's Gotham, you know, what can't happen and it's just like okay but something can't happen sometimes you know <laughs> just like just let it not happen yeah and i felt like just knowing that all these like I, I i'm a big fan of like the mcu so i like how everything even the tv shows are connected um but just knowing that like the whole like dc shit was just like it's all just you know kind of in parts like you know gotham doesn't tie with um, the actual Batman stuff because always a different time period, yeah. right? And then like even those like you know that's on a different network versus like the Flash and like uh, uh, Wonder Woman or Wonder I uh, Supergirl whatever that's out there I can't remember. Um, but it's just, like, yeah, it, it was just kind of annoying because uh, it's it's to me people are like oh like well, like we don't always need it to connect, but I'm just like why not? <laughs> it it makes sense to have it yeah, all connect if it's if, if they're all going to exist in this um you know if all these movies are going to exist, exist at the same time like i don't see the issue with everything connecting i feel like it, it's just like everyone helping each other if, if they were all connected if done the right way you know prime example look at the mcu amazing right the, the, you know there's been some stumbles go out don't, or don't go watch uh, skip the eternals skip black widow th- those things don't really matter um, but you see the the success and the excitement when like there's like that bit of crossover. But when you look at DC and they've tried, but they just did it the wrong way and it was just a complete failure. So now they're reverting to do movies like the Batman, which was awesome, which is like, you know, amazing. And, and even go watch, um, you know, uh, Joker, which was the same thing on an awesome level, like way better than every other like DC EU movie, but it's just like, what was preventing you from doing movies like that for the universe that you were trying to build? It's just, it, it sucks that, uh, you know, they had such a great opportunity. And I, I tell people all the time, Batman, Superman, way more popular than Captain America, Spider-Man um, in like the bigger picture, like outside, like in pop culture, like Batman, Superman, way more popular. But for some reason, they just can't. Yeah or they they just couldn't nail it when it comes to them trying to create this universe it was just so weird to me yeah you know i never really thought about like what you just said like batman superman is really like pop culture like 
up here and then like captain america and everything is a little below it like uh it, more like word of mouth stuff but like the marvel movies are just far mm-hmm. surpassing anything that dc has been putting out yeah it's crazy because they they have talented people who who work over there but just for some reason they just keep fumbling the bag they can't seem to put it together when it matters most mm-hmm. why <laughs> i have no idea but uh, yeah. now i'm curious it is uh where's captain phasma on the wall did she make it or is she not cool enough mm. no i don't have captain phasma so. i do have some sith uh some sith troopers over there though from the uh the sequels okay but the real question is do you have the strongest sith on the wall the strongest sith yes maul no who do you think the strongest sith is it's jar jar binks jar jar binks oh he's over there oh he's on the okay he's, he's on the opposite side yeah, he's, he's behind on, the, he's camera. On the other side yes he is okay. uh dude that's so funny you mentioned that that's like uh Jenna, my girlfriend, uh, one of like the first conversations we've ever had uh, was about how Jar Jar Binks was the ultimate Sith Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, we, uh, our first like four or five dates was going to go see episode seven. Uh, my parents were always joking that we were single handedly funding uh, Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. And now, uh, Six and a half years later, we're living together. Oh, so you went on. And I get to have. You, you went what? on like four separate dates to see the same movie. To see the same movie, yeah. Jenna also loves Star Wars. Um, Interesting, which is uh, good because I don't know if anybody else would accept me like this. Mm. <laughs> Can I tell you about my favorite Star Wars movie? Please, please, yeah. It's a movie called Fanboys. I'm sure you've seen it no you've never seen fanboys come on you're lying to me no are you serious what yes i'm serious how how have you been immersed in the star wars universe and you've never seen fanboys <laughs> i don't know i don't know i feel like you're trolling me there's no way no i'm not is this a fa- like a fan made thing no it- <laughs> it's a real thing okay I, I i gotta send you the trailer now because now Please. i'm yeah. i'm i'm my mind's blown that someone like you who's a huge star wars fan has not heard of fanboys maybe i'll watch i'll watch it tonight tonight or tomorrow yes please show. okay um all right I, i'm gonna dm you the the trailer and and then i'm uh we, we can wrap this up now but i want you to watch it like with me on camera if, if that's okay okay <laughs> okay all right um I, as we wrap this up is there um uh you know anything else you would like to say before we go and i you know want to thank you um for the time um i love post prom i love space i'm happy to see you doing well shout out overwinter coffee but um other than that is there anything else you would like to say um well thank thank you uh this was a blast um i love meeting new people and talking about stuff so uh always a pleasure um i don't know i don't think so okay all right yeah go catch space on tour with life like pacific catch them in europe go to six and stones fest um and uh, and hopefully maybe in the future uh post prom will invade long island and play with some of those cool bands down there i love i love uh that we're using the word invade I think I think that's very fitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 figure it out. I'm going to reach out to to some friends and see see what we can get together. Cool. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you John. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. Goodbye. <laughs>